Um, so it's been a rough two days with the weather having pulled in. Um, doing anything, making a fire, building shelter, anything like that is so much more difficult when you've got this amount of water to contend with. Um, because everything is just absolutely soaked and every time you move outside your shelter you also end up getting soaked and um, yeah then trying to get everything dry again so that you can go to bed is is just as big a mission so it's been a cold wet couple of days um, getting hungry <laughs> but at least there's no shortage of water hey guys I'm checking on my ranger students this morning it's um, it has rained the whole night um, I've just been to one of my lady rangers camp and the camp is completely completely waterlogged. She had to build a platform off the ground. She had to try and suspend her fire to keep it from going out as it was lying in water all the time. Finding dry firewood is a massive challenge. Staying dry in a makeshift or even a well-built shelter in these sort of conditions is very very challenging. So. I'm so proud of my guys in the field. They're doing extremely well. They've gone through a week long training on the Ranger course, and this is their final test. And yeah, the elements, weather conditions have certainly provided what they needed for a very epic sort of finale to their, to their journey. I'm walking into one of my Rangers camp now. Gavin, let's go see how he's doing. This is really hectic. So are you still okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just I'm hiding fine. a little bit from the from the <laughs> rain. This thing like, dries up a bit. My fire, as you can see, died last night quite late. I tried to get it piled on the wood so you can keep the heat and not die, but unfortunately it was a decision of me standing outside in the rain trying to keep it going, risking getting more wet, or just coming and hiding myself a bit inside you and no, waiting, getting there. Hiding it out, yes. Oh, it's absolutely crazy. I've actually just been to Clarice's campsite over there, mm. and um, she had to build a platform off the ground <laughs> to get out of the water. Um, but yeah, you're looking good, spirits. Everything should be fine. You're yeah. enjoying it so far. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. And you'll recommend this to anybody, or not that easily anymore? No, no. Ah, oh, look, yeah. the experience is is awesome. I would recommend it to anybody. We just want to get out here and just learn the extra skills it is to yeah to survive little small things you know and it really does make you appreciate your everyday life where you come from you know you always seem to forget it but it's not so that's not so easy <laughs> when you when you're done and doing it so yeah well dude i'm going to leave you enjoy cool. the rest of your day you're on solo so i'm not going to bother you too much cool. but yeah you're doing extremely extremely well thank and you and these conditions are really <laughs> tasty so just grind your teeth get on yeah, with it and I'll you'll be it. fine i'll see you later right dude cool, man. guys this is tough <laughs> I, I thought when i was leaving base camp there to come and check on these guys that i'm going to find them a little bit uncomfortable or so on but they're still in awesome spirits just show you the resilience of the human spirit even in this um, wet conditions they're still at it still going for it and i'm just going to show you guys quickly in front of me i'm on my way to the next shelter yesterday when i walked here this was dry so that's just the rain from last night there's a river here now in the road yesterday i walked on a completely completely dry road and now I'm slogging it through ankle deep water. This is unreal. The amount of water you can see in all the areas I can move the camera around. It's just pools everywhere. Positive thing is, and that's what Larisse told you guys when I was at her site, is there's a lot of water for drinking water. So you can't complain about that. But let's go have a look and see how Arlen is doing in his campsite. <laughs> how are you dude? I'm alright. Yeah I feel I feel so so sad for you guys but I'm also <laughs> feeling quite um quite um jealous as well because you truly get a proper experience <laughs> out of this. There's no doubt about it yeah yeah. Uh, oh, so how has she actually found it? It rained the whole night long there's like rivers everywhere. Oh yeah all day yesterday all night long um it rained a lot 
The shelter held up pretty decent. It had a couple leaks because it started a little early yesterday, so I wasn't able to finish where I wanted to before I started focusing primarily on keeping the fire going, which turned into almost a full-time job yesterday with it raining as much as it was. I had, uh, I mean, this, this pile of wood here was probably five, six times as tall as it was, and I had a second one right here, and I went through all of it just keeping that stock. And then uh, fell asleep, woke up, fire's dead. So I gotta get that started again today. Uh, but hey, it's keeping me busy, keeping the mind sharp, right? Uh, with all the rain, unfortunately, I haven't seen really any wildlife, so no puffetter yet, but still, still holding out hope for a snake. Um, you know, it's going good though, a little bit chilly. Did break out the emergency blade kit yesterday, the one piece of a kit that was a little bit separate, but uh, yeah, the, uh, the rain jacket got swamped through and through, so that, that got wetted out. So I was like, all right, I'm breaking out the emergency blade kit, staying a little bit dry, which was really nice with the fire because it kind of bounced that heat off of me, or off of the emergency blade kit back onto me. And so I was able to dry out before I went to sleep pretty quickly. Uh, but yep, pretty, pretty decent so far, not too bad. We got one more night, another morning, and then food. Yeah, the wind is also pretty awesome. So you'll see as the wind blows, um, you're actually going to um, be able to dry out all your clothing. Um, the wind is very, very pleasant now. So it's welcome and you've got a hell of a lot of rainwater to drink. So water discipline is not the issue. Oh, water is <laughs> easy. I was even uh, keeping the, the tin out yesterday, getting some rainwater and just not filtering nothing, just drinking a little bit of rainwater. But yeah, water is definitely not the issue out here. Not, Magic. Not at all. I think while it's not raining, I'll leave you to it so that you can get your fire back on um, before it starts raining again and dry out some of the wood. There's a hell of a lot of wood around. It's only wet on the outer surface. You should be able to use the inside and get that dry enough so that you've got some wood for tonight. But John, good luck. You Thank should you. be good. Yeah. Enjoy it. Thank You're you. doing extremely well. Appreciate it. Well, there you have it, guys. Another satisfied customer, if you can call it that. People are always asking, Wait a minute, I've got no food. I've got all these weather conditions to contend with, no accommodation to speak of. I have to build a shelter that's not really waterproof unless you work really hard at it. And wait a minute, I actually pay for this. Yes, guys, you do. Because experiences that these guys have out here these last few days and during this whole range of course, you can't buy in terms of money. There's nothing in this world worth more than experiences. The experiences these guys had, that they take home and that will last a lifetime, to, for them to tell people around a campfire, is priceless. And I can promise you the resilience and the knowledge and skill, life skills they gain from this, will last them a lifetime and will stand them very, very well if they ever have to rely on survival out in the wild. Let's go have a look and see how the next guy's doing. So these guys had it really, really tough like night, last night. You saw the other interviews that I had with the other students. They were like completely, completely out of their element. Um, wet conditions, it's just crazy. So I'm going to um, have a chat with Kurt here. And um, yeah, he's got an awesome site, um, really um, sort of luxury um, camp out here. And um, I always tell the guys that um, you get from one star right up to five in hotels. And, um, but out here, you've got a million stars. Unfortunately, not today, and probably not tonight. As you can see, it's quite dark out there. Yeah. The rain is again on its way. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to my campsite. Um, I've, had some, I've had a couple of laborious hours into the, put into this. I had to take the ground sheet and make it a fly sheet just to block out the water, it doesn't matter how much I stuff that um, uh, what do you call it again? Port Jackson foliage, yeah, for yeah, the yeah, for thatching. Port Jackson. Doesn't matter how much, I uh, even used the koi food, did a lot of wonders for the uh, for the homestead, but not the homestead, but for the area. And uh, yeah, it uh, still dripped a bit through, came wet through the other side, used uh, plastic sheeting the size for which I carried everything in and um, put that on the bottom and then uh, 
later on I used it to wrap my, my feet to keep that uh, dry because the wind was blowing quite strong and it was cold. The actual temperature with the chicken feet was real cold. And the socks drying over there, barefoot now. And doesn't matter what you do, water creeps in everywhere. But uh, I've had a fire ongoing, so well, most of the labor is actually getting the wood together. Keep this going. Ample water, obviously. No shortage of water. Uh, other than that, just keeping, keeping everything dry is the main priority to the fire going for tonight. Really awesome strategy. Daisha, you've seen that um, his campsite is actually well laid out. I'll turn around so that you can see the both of us. Um, he's got a very nice um, lean-to shelter at the bottom here. Um, and it's actually um, blocking out the wind. Um, he also has a wind break on this side, which is natural. And he's using his wood drying area at the bottom there very efficiently. Fire is going at full blast with long logs. That will sustain his fire, get enough coals in there to generate heat. And then also you'll see in the back he's got koigoed. Koigoed is a very traditional Feinbos South African um, thatching or, or um, bedding that we use. It's got a brilliant fragrant flavor and that stuff is amazing to use as a mattress. Very nice and soft, it's got very nice fragrance and at least it makes life a little bit more tolerable out here. If you guys ever read Alien Matthias books on the Neisna forest, you'll see that um, or you read about koigoed that the people that lived out in the bush used at night to sleep. It insulates you from the ground and it makes you sleep much, much, much better than you would on sticks and ground and rocks and mud. So yeah, very, very privileged, but don't take one se for one second think that that now um, constitutes luxury. These guys have it tough. They have an amazing, amazing journey that they went through. And I can promise you, the stories they'll have to tell, as you can see for yourself, is absolutely epic. All that we wish is it's just all of you guys were here to join us in this, but it's their personal story now, so I'm going to leave the guys to do their own thing, solo survive and keep going at it. And yeah, it's dry for the moment, but the rain is on its way. Um, you guys have seen the other interviews, it's tough out here. Right guys, so as you can see, the guys can make it work. Now we'll go to our last student that's in the field and um, see what he has to say about his experience. All right, so welcome at Casa La Luxury. <laughs> this is so awesome. Yesterday I was already amazed with your shelter and yeah, you've done really, really well. I guess you they didn't sleep too badly, um, but with the rain... It is debatable. Um, the rain, there is a few holes here, so I did get really wet. Um, but yeah, the people here getting in nice and comfy, and uh, the tarp helped as well. And yeah, woke up this morning dry-ish, and got time to dry by the fire. And um, yeah, got myself some spoons, myself busy in the rain in that uh, nothing else nice now let me run you through this okay so we get survival and we get bushcraft and we get guys that merely make it by and these guys that thrives as you come in he's got supports on the sides that he's actually tied in with bark it's properly done spend time on the sides of his shelter to actually get proper walls in here to block off the wind Shelter is deep enough so that he can actually get in there properly and you can see that he's actually thatched it to a level where there's very very little if any sunlight that comes through. So here and there you'll have a small little drip but it's not going to be the end of the world. He's sitting on a mattress so he used his ground sheet and actually created a proper mattress. This is as good as it gets and you'll be able to stay here for a relatively long time. You heard how Pierre said that he actually made himself some spoons. Look at this stuff. That's a big spoon. He's very optimistic that the food will come. There's a smaller spoon. So for, it, for the off chance that the, the pickings is a bit, bit slim. And then he's got a fork and a 
spoon, which is in survival terms and bushcraft terms nowadays called a spork. And um, yeah, he's done a really, really nice one here. So keeping your mind busy, keeping your muscles busy uh, makes all the difference in the world. Looking outside his shelter, you can see his fire is relatively close to his mattress. And then also at the back, he's got some firewood. The firewood is in the line of the wind so that the wind can actually dry it out because we've got a pleasant wind um, around here. And I'm sitting inside his shelter now and I'm completely, completely out of the wind. The wind also comes at angles at the front of his shelter, which means I'll get in a little bit deeper so that you guys can see this effect. The smoke doesn't reach me. And the reason for that is that it comes at an angle from the shelter. So the heat is actually, he benefits from the heat, but he doesn't have smoke in his eyes all the time and definitely no smoke in his shelter while he's sleeping at night. That fire is also brilliantly positioned because it's just under an overhang that is created on the roof. He's extended the roof slightly so that he can actually protect his fire a little bit against most of the rain. Unless the wind blows the rain in from the front, his fire will still keep going and he will still be able to rescue some embers to be able to keep a fire running and going the whole night. This is, in my opinion, one of the best shelters that I've seen a student make. This is absolutely epic. It's brilliant. I'll show you guys the outside as well and then we'll leave Pierre to get on with his task. camp, got to know everybody, um, had a great connection with everybody, it's nice to meet some people that are like-minded. Uh, further then, we went on a canoe trip, uh, nice bonding time as well, did some fishing, um, learned how to gut fish, uh, got real cold that night under the stars, but uh, also an experience. Next up, we went into solo, three days solo. Um, as you can see, I built a bush, uh, bush camp here. Uh, kept me out of the wind, the rain, kept my spirits up. So at the moment, I'm still ready for more. Right guys, so the site we had previously with all that water that came in during the night, um, Clarice made the wise decision to move to a drier site and um, let's go visit and see the awesome shelter that she's built. Oh, magic. Oh. Yes, you're going to love it here. Yeah. This is such a freaking classical one-man shelter. Yeah. Perfect, nice view. <laughs> Yeah, this is really cool. So you think this one will be better? Yeah, I think so. I think they'll be much drier here. Relatively wind sheltered and I've patched it quite a bit so should have enough to keep me dry. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so now you can get on with it. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> Guys, I'm so glad that you could join us on this adventure. This truly is a day to remember. Um, I've trained more than 4,000 students in the last 15 years. And every time I get students on a course, it's, it's completely different. The way they go about it, the way that they, that they take the challenges and go through it. There's a general trait in resilience. And I've just been again reminded on how resilient the human spirit can be. These are tough conditions out here, not things that these guys are used to. Um, but they haven't complained once. I haven't heard a single little complaint. I haven't heard them saying that they wish it didn't rain. I didn't hear them saying that they wish it was drier or so more sunnier. All these guys did was they took the training that they received and they physically just got on with the task at hand. I am so, so, so humbled this morning, just again being reminded on how privileged we are if we are people that's outdoor minded, um, how we can just get on with life. And I think that's also one of the reasons why it's so much easier for us to live in a modern world with so much challenges with so many bad things out there it's a broken world and a world that it gives us constant constant challenges but learning the skills out here and going back to civilization where it's inevitable to be confronted by those challenges we can take what we learn 
and we can apply it to our everyday life. And I'm sure, like with all my other students that has gone through the survival courses with Boswa Survival over the years, they are going to go back, apply these skills to their careers, their life choices, their relationships, and have an absolutely amazing journey and story to tell. Guys, I wish that all of you were here. If you ever thought about doing something like this, I want to tell you, don't put it off. This world is getting to a point where we're going to need these skills very soon. Guys that has done this course this week is in a privileged position that they will be ready whenever things happen. And guys, don't get caught with your pants around your knees. We really need to look after ourselves and we really need to learn these skills to apply them to be able to have a fulfilling life. I hope I see every single one of you guys around a campfire on a Boswa course soon. And until then, God bless and please stay safe.